a shadowy flight into the dangerous world of no man who does not exist. Knight Rider, a cult classic, how can you not know Knight Rider? I've watched Knight Rider since I was a kid. Uh, I, rem I remember watching the reruns on the TV and it's a shame Knight Rider isn't on TV anymore, but um, you know, at the time it was incredibly fun little series. You know, these 80s style uh, series, I just love them, you know, it, these are a bit cliche, especially with the acting back in the days and all the, uh, you know, how things were put together. But uh, looking back, I mean, the series was really nice. I'm actually watching them right now. When, whenever I have spare time, I try to watch uh, an episode of Knight Rider. I'm still at uh, season one at the moment. And that's exactly why I got this model right in front of me, which is actually the Knight Industries 2000, or KIT for short. And actually this one is rather rare. The most well-known 118 scales are actually the ERTL Joyride version and the Hot Wheels Elite. And the Hot Wheels, uh, Hot, Hot Wheels, ugh, the Hot Wheels Elite came out in, believe, I believe it was 2014, around that era. But this one is actually from much earlier, which I believe ERTL Joyride versions were all the way from 2004 to, I believe, 2008, but I'm not really sure on that. And as you can see, this model is still sealed. And it still has the plastic tapes around the, uh, on the car as well. So I was pretty surprised to see a closed copy or an unopened copy of a model car from 2004. I can do the most logical thing now and open it for you guys, because that's the best thing to do. So let's get straight to the box, shall we? All right, top of the box. At the left top of the corner, we have the Joyride logo. Whole package looks kind of retro, to be honest. But uh, anyway, uh, at the top, we have the Knight Rider logo with David Hasselhoff or Michael Knight, if you will. Uh, so yeah, we have a huge cutout here, basically, which is uh, which underneath has some transparent plastic, so you can see the model really well. Front of the box, we have the kit or Knight Rider, Knight Industries 2000, however you like to call him with some small cutout at the front and like I said there's a button underneath kit which you can press and it's supposed to light up the scanner kit if you don't know what kit stands for Knight Industries 2000s and if you've seen the show you know that he's going to say that a lot to people four replaceable button cell batteries required and these are included I'm not really sure if they're already in the model so just to be sure I bought some extra batteries because uh, like I said I expect them to be dead Side of the box, another small window. Other side of the box. Oh, there we go, we have it in English, plain English. That's nice to see. Ejector seat, scanner light, removable T-top, and win winch with grappling hook. So it also has some features. So that's basically the box, and uh, let's go uh, open it, shall we? It's a bit dusty, but that's understandable for something that's so old. And. As you can see, it's still taped shut. That's incredible to see, actually. Doesn't get more masculine than this. You know, I always praise the uh, brand Spark for their uh, base plates. I don't really call this a base plate, I call this part of the packaging, you know? So I'm going to take the car off and then we'll have a closer look. We went on to <laughs> replace the batteries, which took a half an hour. Uh, we took the tapes apart and everything and we have finally we have the model itself so at the front we have a really interesting grill and i believe if i'm not mistaken this is the season four kit car one major feature of kit is the scanner in the front so if i'll just push this button underneath ah <laughs> the batteries work and the scanner lights up and i mean wow that is your night rider and the the scanner is actually Five little light bulbs with the uh, light retracting from left to right. We have some fog lights at the bottom and we also have these main lights which unfortunately do not pop up uh, with the Hot Wheels Elite version. They do pop up but uh, apparently not on this model. Um, so let's lift the hood shall we. And we can see a very interesting engine. Talking about the engine block let's separate facts with fiction. So in universe Kit would be uh, propelled by a jet-powered engine, which that is basically the whirl you hear all the time, you know, the when he's driving. Uh, but in real life, the Pontiac Trans Am would house a V8-powered uh, engine. We'll take a little bit of a closer look at the windscreen and a very small 
very nice little detail is you can see uh, windshield wipers here as well. So at the top we have those two little black uh, rectangles, right? You can take them off completely if you'd like and you have the target top, which I believe the target top was only used in season three and four, but I'm not really sure on that. We have this really interesting trunk area and I really like this low level spoiler. The trunk can even open up. The early episodes of season one, uh, we see uh, Michael Knight uh, storing some climbing gear at the back of Kit. What I really like about Kit are those completely blacked out rear lights. I mean, everything about this car is almost black and it's so interesting to see. What I always liked about the wheels are those big black discs and I've never seen wheels like this on the road actually so underneath side isn't really the most interesting part of this model but that's totally understandable but what I wanted to show you here is these two buttons right here so one little uh, one very tiny little black button is to press it and the scanner will activate for a couple seconds and eventually it will just turn off by itself all right, and then the other button is basically to have it on and off just as you please. So, all right, let's take a look at the interior, shall we? And as you notice right away, we have this really weird steering wheel, almost straight from a jet plane. But yeah, we have all the little dashes, all the little lights. There are all decals on there. I'm not sure if they're decals or stickers, but anyway, they're, they're detailed. We have all the buttons next to the steering wheel which provide turbo boost pursuit mode and etc etc all right let's get to the passenger side so the passenger seat actually has a very nice little feature and if you press this button right next to it uh, the seat would eject i'm not sure if this is just the test of time but uh, the plastic uh, is a bit i don't know if i trust the plastic that much all right, uh, if we take a closer look again at the exterior of the model, from the side especially, you can see that kit has a very, very high suspension. And that was actually in the show as well because they did all these sorts of stunts, uh, stunts in the show where they just would drive over grass, sand, dunes and whatever and whatnot. I mean, look at this. This is your kit, your Knight Rider, uh, youth sentimental. From 2004, still looks in such perfect condition i mean this thing came from i believe 2004 till 2008 i'm not really sure any year in between it could have been i must say nitrate is very different uh from what i saw and what it was from my memory in my memory it was all about kit you know all about this car and all this car that could do crazy stuff but when you're a little bit older and you look and you rewatch the series again uh, you notice that kit is actually not really the main persona it actually is david hasselhoff and as obvious as this sounds when you talk about night rider you talk about kit and you know the black car not really about david hasselhoff or michael knight and he is actually the main persona in the series and kit is just basically a side character from what i've noticed from the first eight episodes but that was kind of a shocker to me you know like Wait, this wasn't all about Kit, you know? It is actually mostly based on Michael Knight and his adventures. You know, as a kid, when you as a kid when you watch a show, you're very intrigued with all these little gadgets and you're not really interested in the main story, you're only interested in about Kit and the beautiful car that can do tricks. What I really noticed was all the continuity errors. Continuity. Continuity errors in the show. Um and some of them are really obvious and some are, of them are a little bit more difficult to spot. But uh, like I said about the steering wheel, it's very obvious when they have their stunt car with, this, right, with the uh, just a circular steering wheel. It's very obvious when what kit version they use. And very often the hood, the hood would unlatch by itself. And then in the next shot, it wasn't. Oh yeah, one thing that's so obvious as well is um, whenever there's a big stunt involved, you know, like ramping over a car or whatever, it's so obvious that Michael Knight or Michael Knight, David Hasselhoff is not in the car. You see this really chunky stunt man with a wig and, you know, it's so obvious. And, you know, that was basically the 80s and back in the day, we just didn't care really. So, all right, that's basically enough talk about Knight Rider as a series and Kit and whatever and my love for Knight Rider. 
So once again, thank you all very much for watching. Um, please consider subscribing to the channel. Help out would help out immensely. And it also motivates me uh, to keep making videos for y'all. Every day I look on my phone and see more and more subscribers, so thank you very much. I'm really glad about that, so thank you very much for that. Uh, I hope you enjoy my content and um, keep an eye out for the next video because like I said, it's going to be the same theme as this one, but a little bit different. Uh, so thank you all very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one as well. So thank you.